Hello, welcome back. Glad you're still coming around. Um, today I have a really cool deck that just came in um, that I am really fascinated by because the creator is still alive and the deck is considered vintage. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's out of print. Um, and that is the Gareth Knight tarot deck, which is, you know, super cool. So it comes in this little box, a little tuck box. It's a US Games deck. Um, it came out in 1984. Um, and it was illustrated by Sander Little, who is a Dutch artist. So, um, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about the creator, um, Gareth Knight. He was actually born with the name um, Basil Wilby, um, but he was British, so I think probably he pronounced it Basil. So Basil, Basil, tomato, tomato, you could pick. Um, he was born in 1930. Um, and he, as far as I could tell, is still alive. Um, so, basically, he is best known for a book that he wrote in 19... Uh, spoiler, I have my notes taped up behind the camera. That way I can, you know, make sure I hit all my points and everything, but doesn't help when I put the camera too far in. So, uh, the book was written in 1965. It was called, or is called, A Practical Guide to Kabbalistic Symbolism. Um, so, I thought I would break down um, what Kabbalistic refers to, because... Obviously, there are two different kinds of Kabbalah. There's the Jewish Kabbalah, and then there is Hermetic Kabbalah. In this instance, it's talking about Hermetic Kabbalah. So Hermetic, basically, um, it combines astrology, alchemy, and theosophy. And then Kabbalah comes from the Hebrew, which means um, reception or accounting. So if you think about it, um, Hermetic Kabbalah is all about, um, like, if you think about the accounting department of a, um, a business, any business, they keep all of the records, all of the receipts, all of the transactions, everything that, um, is important to know for the business. And you can refer back to them, you know, when it's tax season or whenever you need to pull something up and, and review it. And so Hermetic Kabbalah is kind of that same thing. It's a system of recording um, the Hermetic teachings, which are all about astrology, alchemy, and theosophy. So this deck in particular is all, um, it's loaded with Kabbalic, Kabbalistic symbolism um, as far as I can tell, it's the only deck that he produced or that he was involved with, really. Um, and so I guess I'll get into a little bit of the nitty-gritty about just, like, the basics of the deck that I feel like most people are interested in. I know I'm interested in it as a collector. Um, oh, and there is our dog Julep, named after a mint julep because we're in, you know, the middle of the South. Um, that is the sound of her shaking. So, thanks for that. Um, okay, so like I said, the deck came out in 1984. It is a full 78-card deck. Um, and, spoiler, it's a pip deck, and I didn't know that until I got it in my little hands and opened it up. And so, um... I was really fortunate in that the deck that I got was fully sealed still. Like, I literally opened the box and it was like, I had to remove the little paper. So, these are the backs. And it's also smaller. Here's a standard tarot deck. Um, it's smaller than a standard 
deck. So it's about, I mean, it, a full inch at least, maybe even a little more shorter and about a quarter of an inch or so um, narrower. So there's that. Um, it of course comes with a little white book. Um, this is really interesting because um, the deck came out in 1985, but I don't think that this must have been like a very early printing because of the address um, of US Games. And then this is a literally the first edition of the of this deck. Uh, the way that you can tell is, and I wish that I would have known this or seen this somewhere before I drove myself insane trying to figure it out and researching it because it's not the easiest thing to find. But now that I have found it, it seems pretty simple. So the way to tell that it's the first edition is this little line of numbers here. And they could be in any order is what I have read. I don't, they're not necessarily like laid out like this, 10 to one, but the lowest number here is the addition of the deck. Um, so this is the first edition and it was all the way completely sealed. Um, like I said, it comes in a tuck box. It's 78 cards and it has um, just a basic title card, which is, you know, nice they all have the same back the cardstock is like standard us games but it's like the nicer lamination that you see oh look now i'm flipping you off so surprise um it's the nicer lamination from like the 80s um as you can see it is like it like has a little bit of a sheen but not really i mean you could take a picture of the deck very easily um and then here is a little bit about, it's just a card about um, Gareth Knight and also about Sandra Little, which is really interesting. Um, so there's that. And then there is like the actual title card, which is the same as the card from the front of the deck. So. I will go ahead and flip the camera and do a little All right, right. so welcome back. Um, so these are the backs of the cards. And like I said, it's a pip deck, so I'm probably gonna run through the majors in a little more detail than I would the, than I will the minors. And of course, I'll show the court cards well because they won't be, you know, they'll be illustrated. So here is the Fool, which is so cool it's kind of like the little jester and um he's still holding the flower which is cool and then there's this like really fun little alligator and then this little like partial rat slash dog slash who knows what kind of animal really um and i think it's cool that this in this particular card you see it you see that he, the fool is like kind of walking into water and I don't think that you really notice that all the time uh, with the rest of, you know, the fools, the standard fools. And then here is the magician. The high priestess. Which is really interesting. She just seems like a little more calm and it looks like she's sitting in the water instead of the water like being behind which is kind of cool the empress which again looks pregnant i love that little sun in the back i know this is 80s but the coloration and stuff kind of makes me think 70s a little there's the emperor Kind of a fun little emperor, look at that, showing a little leg. So that's cool, and I like the gradient effect in the sky, and the purple of the water. The Hierophant, 
is sort of a little, it looks a little Marseille-ish to me. Um, and I like that the clouds behind look like confetti. And then the lovers, which is fun because it, um, the colors are just fun. And I like that it looks like like, you would imagine that these were the people getting married, walking down here. I like that the officiant is being shown as kind of feminine. I know, obviously, colors associated with genders is kind of a binary that people like to get rid of. But in this case, I kind of like it because I think it plays to our advantage because, you know, it's fun. And a little Cupid up in the clouds. So here's the chariot, which is also a really cool kind of card. It gives me like a little Independence Day kind of vibe with the little stars on the banner. Justice has little scales. Again, lots of water, it seems like, in this deck. And I just, maybe it's that I just didn't notice in, you know, standard RWS, but it's cool. This is one of my favorite Hermits, I think. I think it's because I absolutely love this green color. It's one of my favorite colors. And then this blue, also one of my favorite colors. And also the peach is one of my favorite colors. So it's a pretty cool little card, for me anyway. The Wheel of Fortune, again, lots of Kabbalistic symbolism. This looks like a natal chart to me. I don't know if that is necessarily what it is, but that's what it reminds me of. Certainly, it's got the zodiac all the way around, and then these look like planets to me. Um, so that's cool, and it's again kind of on a little raft floating. This strength card is so cool and weird to me. Like, yes, she is kind of like ripping the poor mouth of the lion open, but, um, like, she looks like she's wearing a Batman costume. This lion is, like, the most random colors. I mean, I love the colors together, but it's so jarring to see it as the lion. Again, I'm sure that there's some symbolism and meaning behind the colors, because the deck creator, obviously, was heavily influenced by Kabbalah. So we've got the Hanged Man. And it's interesting. I'd like to know what this is hanging, you know, kind of in the background behind him. Here is Death. Again, very Marseille. The way that, you know, it's a skeleton holding this um, little... Of course, I can't think of what that's called now, but... Temperance. I love the sun and the moon. I like that it's split, so it's night is all encompassed with the moon. And the sun is all sunny on this side. And then the rainbow is kind of like connecting the two. I think it's so fun. And then we have the devil, which is sort of Baphomet-esque. And then we've got the humans in chains. I mean, it's really RWS. The whole deck is kind of RWS minus the pips, obviously. And then this is cool because it's called the Lightning Struck Tower, which is, you don't really see, like, the action being taken to the tower in the description much. Like, usually it's just the tower and whatever is happening is happening. Sometimes it's on fire. Sometimes, you know, it could be anything. But it's interesting that he specifically said Lightning Struck. Here's the star with the orange water and the red earth. It's fun. The moon. This is a really cool moon to me because it's like, this looks like the sky just before it is getting dark or just, you know, um, before the sun comes up. Also, it kind of makes me think of like an eclipse that's not quite done 
happening yet because this looks like the sun kind of behind the moon. So that's cool. Then here's the sun card, which I just absolutely love. It's so fun. These little like twins kind of like dancing and having fun. We've got the sunflower still. Then we have the last judgment, which um, I think that part of um, the hermetic teaching is theosophy, which is about um, finding God through astrology and, and uh, alchemy. And like, that's kind of like the idea. I don't know how correct I am on that, because honestly, I'm not super into uh, Hermetic Kabbalah or anything is fascinating, but it can be a little overwhelming. And then we have the universe instead of the world, but this is such a cool card. I love black as the background. And then I like that inside of the wreath, it's like just a little lighter black. All right, so now we're gonna go into the minors. So we have the ace. This is so fun. It has like the chakra colors all the way down. It looks like a big lightning. The two almost looks like knitting needles to me. And the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, eight, nine, that little flower is interesting, ten, I like the duality, the like polar opposites, the black and white, and then in the middle, I like that right down the middle, they kind of like turn into this like colorful, fun little bit. So we have, um, that's the other thing. The court cards are princess, prince, queen, king. So this would be uh, the page, basically. And she's like wearing the tiger skin. And there's the prince, which would be the knight, which is just like such a powerful card. I like the little flames in the back. And then here's the queen, just like, it looks like she's almost causing the volcano eruption. And then, again, love this little, like, river of lava that's so hot that it's basically white. And then the king of wands. This is so cool. It has, like, this kind of looks like, um, a little sacred geometry to me. Like the, um... Leonardo da Vinci has a, it's like the golden number or something. Dustin at Modern Metaphysic Man, if he watches this, maybe he'll comment and tell me because I'm sure he knows. Um, but that's what this reminds me of, the like spiral of the inside of a shell. So Ace of Discs. Two of Discs. We have the little Yin Yangs and the Ouroboros are... Now I've learned from Simon over at the Hermit's Cave that this is a Lemnus Gate. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the ten is. I don't, I'm sure everyone will recognize this, but this is the Tree of Life. Now we have the princess. I like these little crystals that are with her. It looks like she's going into a cave maybe, or coming out. The Prince of Discs. The Queen of Discs, I love. I just love a little goat. And the king of discs. 
And now we have the Ace of Swords. Again, love the little chakra colors, the little rainbow going around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, with the little rainbow. Eight. Nine. This is a really powerful looking card. I like that. Ten. Very Marseille the way that they curve. Princess of Swords. This looks like Medusa. Like she has like cut the head off of Medusa. Also, how about that 80s hair? Princess. Uh, Prince of Swords. Love the um, the coloration. Queen of Swords. Looks like she's cut the head off of someone as well. Surrounded by little cherubs. And the King of Swords. Seems to be a running theme, this little naked king and queen. Looks like he's just taking off right on out of Earth. Here's Earth, and then the colors are just beautiful, those blues and purples. And now we have the Ace of Cups. Love the Zodiac going around the cup. That's so cool. And then this is probably a little dove. You see this a lot on, um, a lot of Catholic things have this little dove on it. Um, and then this is the symbol, um that the Tabula Mundi uses. So I don't know exactly what that is. It might be like the symbol for Earth or the world. The Two of Cups, very Pisces-esque. There's the Three of Cups. The Four of Cups. I like how this looks like sharing. Like these are going into the first two cups. And then it looks like they're trickling on down into the bottom two cups, which have their own information or, you know, whatever also happening. Five. Six. Again, kind of like giving you that sharing vibe. Seven. Eight. Nine. This is a really pretty, this will make a nice tile, like for a kitchen. Ten. Again with the tree of life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The princess of cups. So fun. Just like in the water. Got a little swan. The prince of cups. Looks like he's riding on some sort of big bird. Maybe a falcon or an eagle or something. Um, I don't know what these little guys are, those little fellas. Kind of giving me a little Flotsam and Jetsam vibe, like Little Mermaid. Queen of Cups. Such a cool coloration. Kind of gives her a little green tinge, but it's fun. And then off in the corner, you've got this little bird who's obviously caught a little fish. And then... Here is the King of Cups. Little crab. Love the colors. It almost looks like he's caught a puffer fish, maybe? That's kind of what it looks like to me. But like a really big puffer fish. So that is the deck. Um, you can absolutely still find it. Um, I've seen it in the tuck box like I have and I've also seen it in like one of those 80s um, I think there's a Rider Waite Smith deck that comes in like a cassette tape kind of a box you know the old like clamshell cassette tapes um, and I've seen it I've seen this deck in that sort of setup too where it looks like a clamshell that a, like a VHS would go in um, you can find them, um, 
the price range, I would say you, I've seen them anywhere between like 80 to $120, depending on, you know, the quality and all of that. This deck did not cost me that much. I was patient um, and diligent about keeping an eye out on it. And um, so I did get a good deal on it. Um, yeah, so if you have any more questions about the deck that you'd like answered, um, I guess leave a little comment below and I will do my very best to find out the answer. Um, please think about giving me a little thumbs up on the video. Um, and thanks for sticking around and watching the, the walkthrough. So have a great night.